professor dr n ganesh is working as a senior faculty department of computer science and engineering srm university city campus vadapallani chennai he has more than 12 years of undergraduate and postgraduate teaching experience which includes 5 years of research experience he has trained many corporate batches on technologies such as mainframes application systems 400 sap abap He has published 10 articles in both international and national journals. He has presented several papers in both national and international conferences. He has written 4 books which are prescribed in Anna University affiliated colleges, SRM University and Bharat University. His research interests are software engineering, data mining and cloud computing. Welcome to UGC lecture series in computer science. We are going to see a series of lectures in the subject operating system pertaining to the BSc students studying in their fifth semester degree program. This paper is paper number 8. So we are going to see topics on unit 1. In unit 1 we have many different topics out of which we are going to see a topic on this session. We are going to see a thread as a topic in this session so we are going to see about threads and the different types of threads this session is the continuation of the previous session wherein we have seen a certain topics on thread so we are going to continue this session with threads again so in the previous session we were speaking about what a thread does what are the features of thread what are the benefits of using a thread how a thread does and what is the difference between a process and the thread something like as a, as a process i said it is a heavy weight process as a thread i said it is a light weight thread is a line of execution whereas process is a program in execution so we as well seen uh, certain things like uh, what is a single thread what is a multi thread difference between a single thread and a multi thread what are the different types of thread that are available something like the user thread and the uh, kernel thread and then and then about the multi threading models when it comes to multi threading model we saw three different model one is about the one to one model that is one user thread will be mapped to one kernel thread and then we as well saw about the many to one thread there is many user threads user thread is one that has been created by a user so many user threads has been mapped to one kernel thread and then we as well seen about uh, many to many threads that is many user threads have been mapped to many kernel threads a uh, kernel thread is one which has been available in the operating system the operating system has certain threads such threads you call it as a kernel thread a thread that has been created by user you call it as a user thread so in today's lecture we will be continuing with the same after seeing the many to one one to one many to one and many to many models we will see today the two level models that is we will see a comparison between what is a two level and what is a many to many model what is the difference between a two level model with that of a many to many model so apart from that in, in today's contents we will be seeing topics such as thread libraries threading issues thread cancellation and the types of thread cancellations signal handling thread pools scheduler activations and how threads are used in the windows xp i will be giving you a practical example so now in the two level model so you have seen about a many to many multi threading model what is a multi many to many model in the many to many model many user threads are been mapped to many different threads that is available in the kernel then what is a two level model even in the two level model it is similar to a many to many model but what is the difference between a two level model and a many to many model is that here it is it allows a user thread to be bound to a kernel thread whereas in the many to many model you have a mapping between a user thread and the kernel thread 
here in the two level model this user thread is bounding with the kernel thread so what is the advantage of having a bounding with respect to a kernel thread it has been like you can have a faster set of execution okay what are the operating systems that use this kind of uh, two level threads are it is irix operating system hp ux operating system true 64 bit unix operating system solaris 8 and the earlier versions of the solaris operating system uses a two level model then this is how a two level model looks like so here you have a multi threading wherein here you have a kernel so this is this diagram was pretty similar to a many to many model the only difference over here is this thread gets bounded with the thread that is available in the kernel so there it is only mapping in a many to many it is only mapping here it is it gets bounded so that is about a two level model then let us speak about the different thread libraries in the in the previous session we are we gave, i gave you an introduction about the different thread libraries the different thread libraries are p threads and the other thread is called as a java thread so what is a p thread a p thread is called as a posix thread what is a posix thread which is nothing but it is an ieee standard so we will be seeing more details on the p threads so here the thread library it provides programmer with api for creating and managing the threads so there are two primary ways of implementing one is the library entirely in the user space kernel level library supported by the operating system now we will see about a p thread a p thread is called as a posix thread which belongs to an ieee 1003.1c so api is a standard so with the api standard it is available for thread creation and synchronization this api specifies behavior of the thread library implementation is up to development of the library so this p threads are used in uh, operating systems such as unix operating system and it is as well used in uh, certain solaris operating systems so and and it is also used in the uh, mac os as well the linux operating systems so now the next thread is said to be the java thread the java thread i suppose you would have used in your uh, when you are executing your java language you would have used a thread so these threads these java threads are been managed or been executed and been managed by a jvm what is a jvm a jvm is a java virtual machine that is available within a java within the java language so this jvm this java virtual machine manages this uh, kind of java threads so how it executes is that as this is typically implemented using thread model provided by the operating system whatever you are working with so java threads may be created by extending the thread class implementing the runnable interface i suppose you would have worked with the java programs you might be having a basic knowledge of a java program when you write a java program you write a class name and you write this class name extends this particular name thread name this particular thread name extends a thread name name of the thread and that implements some action listener some runnable interface so say for example if i want to write a code for a mouse click event so what i do is you write the name of the class name class and the java name and you write the extends what is the name of the thread you give you give the name of the thread for the extra extends the thread name implements if i want to give a click for a particular button and when when it is after clicking if it it, sh it should it should go to a next screen then i write a program as extends a thread name a name of the thread and then implements some sort of action listener mouse click so if i'm going to click this mouse then what should do what it should do so that mouse click or the action listener it is called as a runnable interface and extend uh, you give an extend and then you give a name that is called as a thread name so 
all these three things all these things are being managed by this jvm jvm is a java virtual machine and this kind of thread writing this kind of thread you call it as a java thread so next is the issues involved in threading what are the issues that are involved in threading what happens when you use a thread so there are certain issues that are been available when we use this kind of threading concept issue number 1 the semantics of fork fork and exec system calls so what is a fork when do you generate a fork call a fork call is generated fork system call is called when you want to create a child process i suppose these things we have seen in the when we are seeing the process management lecture so in the process management lecture we were seeing about a fork system call a fork system call is used it's been called in order to create a child process a child process is created from a parent process so this parent process has the right to create a child process it has a right to kill a child process and so on so for all these things you use a fork system call and uh, in order to get their id of the child uh, process we use a uh, id called as get pid a function name so this gets the uh, process id of that particular fork so that is one thing the second thing is the thread cancellation of target thread which will be asynchronous or deferred what do you mean by asynchronous an asynchronous thread cancellation is nothing but you cancel the thread immediately supposing if something happens some untoward incident happens uh, the the system is going to uh, shut down immediately then that particular thread whatever it may be the case will get cancelled i suppose when you use a windows 7 or a windows 8 operating system supposing we are going to type something if you are say for example in microsoft word and and supposing if your kid comes and and if he is going to switch off the uh, computer right so before you could save you will be prompted with an option called as force shutdown so when you press a force shutdown it will not ask whether to save or not if it is a force shutdown button is pressed then that particular thread will get cancelled immediately it will be aborted immediately such abortion you call it as such thread cancellation you call it as an asynchronous thread cancellation whereas the other thread type of thread cancellation is called as a deferred thread cancellation what do you mean by deferred thread cancellation a deferred thread cancellation is one wherein you are going to have uh, something like uh, that particular thread will get cancel after a particular instance of time it will be asking you whether you want to save it or not yes or no or cancel without pressing that option you will not be allowed to switch off the system there are other means of switching off the system if you are going to uh, switch off the power plug or if you are going to switch off your ups your system will get switched off but that is a different scenario but this will be asking you for a while whether you want to save this file or not and then after you give your particular valid input it will say you can switch it off or uh, switch it on so that is called as that is it gives you a certain specific period of time to cancel that particular thread such a period given for cancellation thread cancellation is called as a deferred thread so these are the two types of thread cancellations available then the second the third one is the signal handling in the signal handling you have synchronous signal handling and asynchronous signal handling and then the fourth threading issue is the thread pools so what are the thread pools we will be seeing it in the in the forthcoming slides and then about a thread specific data so what is a thread specific data it creates facility needed for data private to thread so for particular thread if you require only particular set of data then only that data will get mapped to this thread so that is called as a thread specific data then we will be saying about the scheduler activations so what are the different types of schedulers and how it gets activated how it is used in the windows xp so those details come under these threading issues so all these threading issues we will be seeing one by one in the forthcoming slides now about the thread cancellation 
so what is a threat cancellation or by and large the threat cancellation is nothing but terminating a thread before it has finished is called as threat cancellation so we will see more about this threat cancellation after the break Welcome back after the break. Before the break, we were saying topics on the threading issues. So now we will see how a thread has been cancelled. I already have said about the two different types of thread cancellation. One was asynchronous thread cancellation. The other one is said to be a deferred thread cancellation. Now, what is an asynchronous thread cancellation? Before we could see the types, first we will see what is a thread cancellation. How it happens? So here it is. The thread cancellation is nothing but it is terminating a thread before it has got finished. What does it mean? That is, you are stopping a thread from its action. So it is some process is going on, and you wanted to interrupt that particular process, and you wanted to get rid of that, come out of that particular process. So before it gets completed, you are trying to stop that process. So as as a, as a stopping the process. is of two types so we will see the different types of thread cancellations so one is the asynchronous approach second one is the deferred approach so this asynchronous cancellation terminates the target thread immediately and this deferred cancellation allows the target thread to periodically check if it should be cancelled so this is what i said before the break so if you want to if your child comes in and if he is going to shut down if you want to do a force shut down then it will not ask you whether you want to save it or not to save it uh, save the word ms word document which we are which we are working with or not so that kind of cancellation of thread you call it as an asynchronous cancellation and the deferred cancellation is it will be checking periodically whether this should be saved or not say for example when you have a gmail account you are typing in something after every 3 seconds or 4 seconds once it will your document your uh, mail whatever you have typed in will get saved in the draft folder so and from the draft supposing if there if there is a interruption of power or if if there is a problem with the internet connectivity then you can very well open the draft folder and then you can very well restart from place where it got saved or or in other words when you are using an microsoft word when you are typing it say for example you have typed somewhere around 25 pages and you have not saved at all and uh, say for example you are using a microsoft word 2003 version or uh, office 2003 or above if you are not saved and suddenly if the power goes off if you do not have an uh, inverter connection or if you do not have a uninterrupted power supply ups connection and if your computer uh, shuts down automatically and after the power resumes when you when you are going to switch it on switch on your computer when you open this uh, microsoft word what happens is that as in the microsoft word you will be getting a prompt as last opened uh, or or the recovery file this is what has been recovered you are not saved and do you want to save it or do you want to close it right no yes save it no remove this file you will be having two different radio button options so when you give yes and it will be saving at the last moment where the operating system it itself has saved it so this is like you have not saved it with any means the operating system by itself it is saving it similarly when you type in certain mails the draft the gmail itself saves the contents to a draft folder you are not asking the gmail to save it to the draft folder so that is an example for a deferred thread cancellation so you get certain time frame in order to uh, before a thread gets cancelled out so such a thread cancellation called as a deferred thread cancellation next is about signal handling so what is a signal handling signals are used it is pretty common in the unix operating system so supposing if some event happens before the event happens 
immediately the unix operating system will pass a signal to the operating to the os to the user that a particular event is going to happen so this signal makes the user or makes the thread to be to get saved from being cancelled or from being uh, stopped abruptly so such a concept you call it as a signal handler so which is prevalent in the unix operating system now we will see more on the signal handler a signal handler is used to process the signals a signal is generated by a particular event signal is delivered to a process signal is handled so it is more common in unix operating system to notify a process that a particular event has occurred then what are the options of a signal handling so what makes a particular operating system to check whether this has been uh, handled or this has been occurred or not so how it has been done so the signals are delivered to the thread so what happens when when the when an event has occurred when you are going to shut down a system if you are going to shut down a unix operating system or a linux operating system uh, you will be having an automatic signal handler will be it is inbuilt within the operating system unix or linux so what it does is it that signal is passed through the thread where you are working where the word or whatever it is was working with so it passes through the thread and it immediately it saves the locality so that is said to be one of the option the other things are here deliver the signal to every thread in the process and it delivers the signal to certain threads in a process these are the different conditions so first condition is it is delivering the signal to the thread which the signal applies to the point where the ms word if you are going to type not ms word if you are going to use an office suit in a linux operating system the, to the point where the word ends to that point the signal reaches and it makes the thread to get saved that is one condition the other condition is so your it is specifically it is catching hold of that particular point and then finishing it off the other signal condition a uh, signal option a uh, signal handling option as for every thread it delivers a signal that is second option the third option is it delivers a signal to the certain threads in the process the fourth option is it assigns a specific thread to receive all signals for the process so these are the four different conditions that are available so this is about a signal handling now let us see a next topic of thread pools what do you mean by thread pools a thread is a line of execution what is a pool literally a pool is a big storage area and an area where you have n number of uh, resources available maybe say for example what is a swimming pool in general a swimming pool is a place where you have uh, plenty of water available so uh, what is the use of it you can swim you can jump you can do whatever you want similarly thread pool is a area where you can store multiple threads on that and you can use the thread whenever it is required such a pool we call it as a thread pool what is the advantage of having a thread pool the advantage is you will be having an access you will be having a faster access because apart from the data whatever you require you have other data as well so you can you can retrieve the data whatever you want at a earlier pace so let us list out the advantages the first advantage is usually it is slightly faster to service a request with an existing thread that create a new thread because you have other threads even second advantage is it allows the number of threads in the application to be bound to the size of the pool third point is it allows each thread to have its own copy of data so because it is in the pool so it has to allow each thread to have its own copy of data fourth point is it is useful when you do not have control over the thread creation process that is when you are using a thread pool say for example you at times you are allowed to create a user thread but you are not allowed to create a kernel thread and supposing if you do not have proper permission 
if you are a guest user where and i suppose you would be knowing a difference between uh, an admin user and a guest user a guest user does not have enough privileges that the admin user has so you will not be allowed to create you will not be allowed to use your pen drive you will not be allowed to use any sort of removable devices wherein the admin has all sort of privileges in such a case we go in for this thread pools so that is a thread specific data then let us go on to a next threading issue the main issue called as a scheduler activation what do you mean by scheduler activation a scheduler activation is one where we have seen about uh, the multi threading models one of the multi threading model was uh, many to many model wherein many user threads get mapped with many different kernel threads so similarly for each thread in order to map which each thread of a kernel in the many to many case it this has to be scheduled by the cpu so how it does that is called as a scheduler activation how this threading or this mapping of threads between the user and the kernel takes place is called as scheduler activation so the points are both many to many and two level models require communication to maintain the appropriate number of kernel threads allocated to the application the scheduler activations provide up calls what is an up call an up call is a communication that you receive from the kernel through a thread library you call it as an up call an up call is a communication that you receive from the kernel library through to the thread that is called as an up call then the third point is this communication allows an application to maintain the correct number of kernel threads so these are the three different points that are required to activate a scheduler now let us see how these threads are used in the windows xp in windows xp implements an one to one uh, mapping or a kernel level mapping so each thread what does each thread contain in our previous session about process we are seeing about what does a process contain what does this process control block contains in that we are seeing that it contains process id process name program name program counter process registers stack so on and so forth so similarly in a thread because thread is nothing but it is a subset of a process maybe like because process is to be a heavy weight thread is to be a light weight so process program in execution thread is only line of execution it acts as a subset so in this case as a thread what can it contain even if the process is going to have a process id definitely a thread will also have a thread id so what else it has so this has a thread id a register set separate user and kernel stacks private data storage area so these are the four things a thread should contain so all these four things are available in this windows xp thread then this windows xp thread the storage area or which contains all these contents like the register thread the uh, uh, st stacks uh, private area and, and all these private storage area you call it as a context of the thread so we have a primary data structures of the thread includes e thread k thread and teb e thread is the executive thread block k thread is the kernel thread block t thread teb is the thread environment block so this is how it looks in a windows xp thread environment this is e thread where you have a start address pointer to parent address process k thread again and teb so with this we summarize our entire session so what are things we have seen in this session in this session we have seen the difference between many to many and two level models we have learnt about the thread libraries we have seen the issues in threading we have discussed the issues in how to cancel a thread and the different types of thread cancellation we have as well seen the about signal handling we have seen about the thread pools we have also learnt about how to activate a scheduler and we have discussed about the threads that has been used in windows xp now let us see what are the possible questions that can arise from this session the questions are question number 1 what are the different thread libraries what are the issues in threading 
what is a thread cancellation what are the types of thread cancellation what is a signal handling what is the purpose of thread pools so these are the questions that are possible from this session so with this we conclude this session we will see more about more topics on operating system in the forthcoming sessions thank you